Hey, this is the Backyard Mechanics series, and we're going to troubleshoot and repair, try to repair uh, entirely, this Schumacher Power Booster Jumper Car uh, Compressor Unit. It's also got an inverter. Stay tuned. Hello, welcome back to Pine Meadows Hobby Farm. I'm your host, Jerry Hans, and I'm taking refuge in the greenhouse because this is the largest environment that I have that I could use as a pseudo workshop also. Plus, it's warm out here. It's got the heater. I'm protected from the rain and the snow, and I get to uh, take my time and go through and fix this Schumacher uh, power booster unit, which jumps, it, uh, jumps cars. My son did a review on it uh, about a couple of years ago and he used it a lot. I've got the perfect solution for a dead battery. Now would be a good time to do a quick product review on the Schumacher 2260W battery kit, emergency kit, so stay tuned. Hi, welcome back to Pine Meadows Hobby Farm. I'm your host, Jeremy Hansen. I have right here a Schumacher 2260W emergency battery pack. It has seven features built into it. We have your two 12 volt sockets, two 110 with a 400 watt inverter, a little light if you need a little emergency light, and of course your jumper cables and a tire compressor. You could use the 400 watt inverter to take a power tool and uh, run it in a remote location. We also have a little USB unit here so you can charge your electronic devices. But one thing I forgot to add with the air compressor, it does come with a hose where you could hook it up here. You have two settings, one for the tire pump and the other you can air up your air mattress. Now it looks like we have a dead battery here. This emergency kit will come in handy. Make sure you put your red on your positive and your black on the negative. Turn on the switch and it says we got some uh, good voltage. And it looks like we do have some good voltage in there, so I'm going to go ahead and start the engine. But it does work, and I will share with you some emergency situations I've been in. I've been able to use it. It saved my bacon. I bought this unit a couple of years ago, and aside from being able to help other people out or giving myself some uh, jump starts, twice I've had problems with my alternator, and it's put me in a unsafe situation, whether it be side of the highway or in somebody's driveway, and they weren't too happy with that, but I just had a little bit longer to go before I could get it parked in a safe spot. So, in the emergency situation, I was able to hook the cables up to the battery, run them down the inside, top side down to the battery and let it set on the hood while it fed my car the energy it needed to get the quarter mile back down to a safe location. Twice this happened in about a one month period 
and I was able to get it out of the person's driveway or off the highway to the nearest parking lot to where I could sit there and work on the problem. Now, if you are going to have this and you come uh, into an emergency situation, it is essential to keep this charged at all times. He would use the compressor for airing up tires. Of course, he jumped his... But it failed, so we're going to troubleshoot why it's failing. He had car batteries, and sometimes he would even use the uh, inverter part of it, which is fabulous. And he used the uh, USB port a lot. So this has got all the features that you need. So when you charge the unit itself, yeah, it has that onboard battery, and that's your power supply. Just applies everything you need for this unit. You just plug it into an AC outlet. It's got all the internalized mechanisms and a, you know, battery charger, which is an onboard battery charger, which is what you need. And uh, so I've been uh, leaving this on the charge for quite a while. It's not keeping a charge. So that tells me one thing. The battery is toast. Let's check on this one thing. We've got this LED light back here. We'll plug it into the uh, inverter unit. Plug it in right here. Uh, there we go. And we turn it on. It won't even light it. And the unit's plugged in. I mean, it's still plugged in the AC outlet. It should have plenty of uh, plenty of juice in it, but it does not. That indicates bad battery. Bad battery. So let's take this thing apart. You remove the battery and get the replacement battery, and we'll install it and see if it works. I want to unplug it from its power source. We'll set that aside. And then we'll take these off because they're going to need to access this panel. Because that panel is where the uh, actual battery is located. So using a crosstop screwdriver, you just remove those screws. Got a little bottle cap to put those in. And this should remove and reveal the battery. Yep, there's the battery right there. Let's try to pull that battery out a little bit. Okay, and then uh, I'll just take these off right here. So what that takes is a uh, 5 16 inch wrench. Remove that. And of course we do the same to the other side. And that battery should theoretically slide right out of there. And there it is. Now I got the model number from this battery and I went online and ordered a new battery. And that new battery arrived today. I actually store a box knife in my greenhouse up here. So then I can just carefully cut into this. Okay, box knife. Why is it not, oh there we go. Okay, it comes with screws on the top, right there. Here's a registration code for your battery. We'll go ahead and do that later. And we'll match the battery and make sure it's perfect match. Yes, it is. So, we set this one back in the box because I'm going to take this down and recycle it which is the safe and appropriate thing to do okay your red is on the left as you're looking at from the back and then we're going to try to slide this back in there ah 
Okay, we got to pull it back out a little bit so I can attach those bolts. Okay. Gonna make sure these connections are really good and tight. And then the other one. Make sure you have your uh, lock washer on there and it didn't fall off. And then do the same with the other side. Okay, slide that back in. There we go. Put this back in. There we go. And then replace all the little screws. Okay, it is back together. Let's check out the pump. So my, so my son thinks the diaphragm is bad in this pump and I don't know anything about changing the diaphragm. And I'm really not going to be using this for the pump itself, but mainly for the power inverter. But I have the advantages of uh, using the jumper cables also if I need them. Let's put these back in place. Wrap that up around, under, over, and these clip to these little tabs back here. Up, over, under, and stores on that clip. Oh, I'm going to put the thing this side so when I plug it in to charge it, it's not in the way. So, let's see. It's got a 12.7 volt charge, which it didn't have before. It only went up to set a nine. Uh, light, nice and bright. Inverter. Well, let's see if the inverter is going to light this light. Look at that. The light works now. And it's 16 watts. So I would venture to guess that my troubleshooting efforts were accurate, a diagnosis of the problem. I'm going to go ahead and take this down to the local recycle agent and recycle this battery and uh, plug this in to make sure it's going to have a full charge. So now I can use it for whatever project I got going on for portable power. Uh, like if I need a, my saw or my drill out someplace, I could uh, just take this with me. It's a little lightweight. I don't have to take a um, generator. And uh, this will supply the power that I need for the moment. I should add, it has two 12-volt uh, like cigarette lighter receptacles here for plugging in those kind of appliances. But I love the option of the USB port because I've got a use for this for USB. Yeah. Well, I'm Jerry Hansen. This is the Backyard Mechanic Series. Uh, just troubleshooting and repairing a, uh, a gift. It was free. Uh, it was just given to me, and so I made it work. Okay, it cost $36 for the new battery. So these things uh, cost me $36. So that's a bargain, and I can use it in a lot of places. So stay tuned to more videos. You can do that by subscribing and clicking that bell icon. That'll alert you to new videos as I upload them. Give us a thumbs up. Click that share button. Sharing my videos on your social media platforms helps us out a lot. Uh, also leave a comment. Hey, be safe. 
always be kind. We'll see you guys in the next adventure. Bye-bye now.